uh, before uh, letting the, the audience to ask their questions, I have one more, uh, one last question. Uh, are you collecting art? And what is your relationship with, with art and, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, art collecting? Actually, uh, I started, uh, well, my family was interested. Uh, I was 13 years old and uh, I started, I bought my first painting from Nuri E.M. Uh, of course, my father paid for it. It was a foundation, cancer foundation for, uh, you know, uh, people having cancer, a donation foundation. These people had donated their works and I love this. It is still with me upstairs, a beautiful head of Nuri E.M. And uh, my father was, I was lucky for him to pay for it. Uh, but so, I mean, and then in the, when I was 17, 18, I used to go into covered bazaar and get things done for my neck and, or my hand and so on. And so I was always a bit interested in arts and uh, going to the uh, markets, uh, like uh, here we call it Bitbazer in France, Marche Opus in London, Portobello, or many others. Uh, our uh, weekends, we used to go with my mother always uh, uh, to these parts with my cousins and so on. So we were familiar to antiques. Later on, uh, I started buying uh, when I was affording paintings. And then, yes, I go always uh, since 20 some years, 25, 20, I don't know, to Venetian Biennale. I go to most art uh, fairs, uh, starting with Basel many years, uh, and then Frieze and all sorts, and also to solo uh, art galleries. Uh, and I try to follow my taste and uh, also uh, what I can't understand, the new uh, understandings and especially conceptual art, for example, I tried a long time understanding it, uh, many of it, and it created a completely different vision. It's an artwork for the mind, actually, uh, forcing you to think differently. So actually, uh, the uh, art of the painting, Pentur, had stopped for some understanding and uh, Venetian Biennale had written, art doesn't have to be beautiful, but it has to uh, stir some emotions or some thoughts, something new. It has to bring to your life something new. So there is a fine line there between design. Design, you're commissioned to do a certain thing like pret a porter in fashion. Uh, it has to be able to be sold by that company or by that, uh, if it's, a product for a car, it has to be acceptable for that design management. But art is something where you are by yourself, you create, and it might not be sold, it might not be liked, it might not be anything, or it might be something exquisite, uh, recognized or recognized later. You know, art has got too many question marks, but uh, if it creates new understandings, if it's not a copy of some old understanding, uh, then uh, there are different ways of flying in that. It excites me a lot and brings new horizons. Listening to you also was very exciting for me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to ask to the audience if they have questions. Uh, I'm Absolutely. sure. The Sure. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm thrilled, actually, uh, because the way you have put it together, I had the questions here, you have covered most of it. And uh, I was, uh, and my team as well, they looked into it, uh, very much surprised the way you covered all different angles. Thank you. Uh, I think there is a question. Uh, I don't know if you, you see the question, there is a question of a student. Uh, I don't see no. Uh, okay. Nereden uh, görebilirim? Uh, I, if you want, I read. Um, in economics, trend is often considered as given. Uh, do you think? Sorry. Uh, can you repeat? In economics, do, do you read? Can yeah. you? I didn't see. No, I can't read it. I don't know if I'm in. Uh, I have to do something. Uh, I'm familiar with the chat. 
Sorry? If you open chat, you can you can see it. Ah, chat. Okay, there are three there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, in economic strength is often considered as given. Do you think, however, uh, that the supply on which side you are can somehow drive the trend because of the importance of creativity in your job? Uh, okay. Yes, actually, uh, depends on how and when and who you are working for, what you're doing, but we do uh, affect the trend. Uh, I can mention it, for example, uh, the creativity side of the job. Uh, sometimes if you are not too much over the border, uh, it can really create some uh, kind of uh, trend if it falls in the right time, in the right place, yes. For example, uh, I can give you an example from my life. Uh, nowadays, looking at some, even in Sultan Suleiman, we have got this series. Uh, I don't know if I can mention it uh, sometimes, but I'm giving it. I see some decoration there that as Ottoman being mentioned, which is not Ottoman decoration, but it's our uh, design. We have started a trend with all these leather blinds, uh, canvas leather togetherness or behind glass techniques and so on. Uh, because at the time there was no craftsman in this field, I started to create and I didn't want to copy anything. Uh, I mean, an imaginary, because when you look at the Orientalist paintings, what you see is also imaginary. It's not that it was like that. It, there are some inspirations that were like that. So ours was also what we created was my inspiration. But because they couldn't find the right sources in many uh, series on television, they started designing the way I have designed something uh, in one of the restaurants or in one of uh, somebody's house as an Ottoman design. And this will stay for years, I think, because there is nothing precedenting. Uh, but this is not right, actually. Historians should put it right, art historians, and we should be the ones in design field. But we started a trend, and uh, this trend in that field, in many fields, and we were also given uh, the design uh, of designer of the year award in London because in nine levels because they said they had they hadn't seen all these nine designs that we used in one premises ever before. It was completely new. For example, metal blinds. Ottomans didn't have metal blinds. But when I was designing Shakir in mosque, before that I designed house and garden. Uh, design room and uh, I tried it there it was liked it very much I used in Shakir in mosque a whole facade out of a metal mesh blind in Arab countries they call it Musharabiya in uh, India they call it Jali in Turkey we used to have it on our windows in wood like a mesh for women to see to be able to look out but not be seen through some kind of uh, you know, some closeness of the East, let's say. So I uh, created this blind in metal and used it in different levels in some restaurants and, and also in this mosque that people like a lot. So uh, I think this is an answer to you. A bit long, maybe. This is my problem. I fly from one side to the other. This is the creative side of me. But sometimes my mathematical side stops it. Sometimes it doesn't. I, I don't know if this is the answer. Otherwise, uh, you really much. Haha. OK. Uh, also, is the demand, if the demand may appear as a barrier to you, since you explained, you also have to follow your client's requirements. Surely, um, I have to say something. Uh, I do not design, ask the client and then design. No, I ask the client questions and I try to understand the psychology and uh, actually 
no, uh, client or clients, the users. For example, in uh, the mosques, I have designed 12 mosques. I, we are right now a team when I say, I should say actually we, when I started off, it was I, but now it's, we are 30 people. And uh, we have designed in Qatar, uh, I think it's our sixth or seventh mosque and uh, in Bahrain, four mosques in, uh, we designed for Moscow, uh, it wasn't executed, for Cologne, for Stuttgart, these weren't executed, for Saudi, I designed the mosque. For example, uh, some of the executions were done by me too. Here, I uh, try to understand the local people. Whatever I'm doing, I try to understand, first of all, the geography, the building, if there is a building, if we are not designing a building, uh, and then design accordingly. Uh, and also, uh, I try to understand what sort, what type of a building we want to have and who is going to use it and how they want to use it. Uh, after this understanding, we come up with the design and nowadays, of course, with beautiful 3D designs. In the old days, it was with drawing. And then when the client doesn't like, uh, we change certain things and then we go to execution. Otherwise, we don't design together with the client. That would bring only chaos. There could be, I mean, it could be like an experiment, but I can assure you it would be uh, uh, chaos at the end. Uh, what are the difficulties you face with, while becoming first woman who designed the mosque? It's an interesting question. Actually, frankly speaking, when I was first commissioned the mosque, uh, I was quite uh, excited, very much surprised, very grateful, but at the same time terribly scared because although I know mosques and the religion very well, uh, being from this country. Um, it was a field, untouched field. So, but I had been working in mosques. So for me, it, it was familiar. I worked for my design sitting in the mosque floors most of the time because there are so many beautiful designs there that I would be inspired by. So that side made me stronger, but I was also working uh, and studying some high theologians and my husband had studied heavily Theology, with some theologians, especially one, Hussein Atay, who is a very important person who started uh, the theology um, section in Ankara University. And uh, so I asked my barriers. I, I, whenever I work, I always try to bring a team together uh, from uh, the, that field of uh, the best in that field of people so that I can consult uh, and move on. So teamwork is very important in my case. And in this case, I realized that I also went to art historians, uh, theological level. Uh, and uh, I realized that actually uh, our, the barriers were in our minds. They said, I shouldn't offend uh, the, uh, pray, um, the worshipers. That was the main idea. And the mihrab had to be at the far end of the mosque. And please try to create a mosque. Uh, not, I mean, which what I realized, this is my interpretation. I mean, not a sculpture that would please me, but a, uh, a building where the worshippers would feel serene and would be able to connect. So after I understood this, I changed many things, uh, like, uh, many uh, pieces, like from the mihrab to mimbar, nothing is the same as, sometimes I do create uh, classicalish mosques. Some of the mosques I've done were asked uh, from me as Ottoman mosques. And I created a kind of uh, uh, interpretation of mine as uh, Ottoman mosques in some countries. But here in Turkey, we have very bad examples of Sinan's mosques and the old beautiful, they are so well finished that you can't do any better. They are very well finished, those mosques, and you shouldn't copy them, I think. You should do something else, some of your version. So, uh, and I tried to keep quiet so that people wouldn't interfere in my work. So I worked quietly in this. 
So nobody interfered in my work for a long time until BBC discovered because they had to have a radio interview with me on Bosphorus. And somebody said she's in uh, Karaja Ahmed Mosque. And they came over and I asked them kindly, please don't publish anything because that would mean probably us not being able to finish. And they were extremely kind and they waited till the first opening and they were the first ones to publish, uh, um, uh, to present it on BBC World 24 hours. And uh, of course, when they started asking questions, I realized that I was the first woman in the world. I knew that there was nobody in Turkey, but I didn't know that there was no one in the world who had designed the mosque. I knew there were, uh, I mean, if there were, there, it should be in Egypt, or Algeria or Turkey or, I mean, somewhere where uh, more open-minded looks uh, on women was possible. Of course, we had gained women's rights uh, in 1923, which we are very proud of. Uh, and uh, also I must say in the Ottoman times, uh, much, amazement to many uh, people's belief all the except one all the ottoman sultan's mothers are christians or one is jewish many different uh, religions uh, that shows the open mindedness of the sultans so uh, actually in this country's understanding it was lying the openness so i didn't realize it in the beginning but i was scared that somebody would stop me saying she's not the best architect, she's not an architect, or she can't do this or something like that. And suddenly authorities would stop it. This didn't happen because I kept very discreet. I don't know if this was your answer. Hello, uh, let me have the glasses. When I have the glasses, I can't see far. Uh, when I don't have it, I can't see near. So that's my problem. I can't do the both. We know that you have over 500 projects, including mosques, residences, hotels, restaurants, special events. Which project did you like to work on the most? I must say, I love each project of mine. I really love uh, doing them. Uh, I respect my clients exquisitely. What is so different about Shakir and mosque? Uh, I love the idea uh, of being able to relate uh, to uh, a bigger public. Uh, in houses, of course, you're relating to a person and sometimes you do exquisite work, amazing things, but it's more related to that family and their friends. Whereas in a hotel, I like as well. That's why the Ottoman hotel is very special for me too, uh, because we worked with the owner. Uh, hand in hand, really, and uh, we tried to make the first uh, Ottoman touch hotel, everything else that was said to be Ottoman, it wasn't Ottoman at all before. Uh, also in the Shakirim Mosque, I wanted to relate to the bigger masses with our best craftsmanship that we were taking to the richest houses. I wanted to present to the public. So actually, uh, like our uh, Mimber's work uh, is done uh, by one of the best artists, modern artists of Turkey, and the form is different and uh, it's ac ac under acrylic uh, carnation leaves, uh, I mean leaves, uh, and so uh, it reflects like our textiles, but it's a contemporary art completely. So our mihrab mimber and our glass works and metal works are completely contemporary in the thinking. So I would call it conceptual art. Uh, and that's why it made a big change in my thinking. And uh, I'm very grateful. And also uh, it made also people, women realize that there was no barrier whatsoever in the thinking. F uh, forget about women only. Uh, modern architects hadn't designed mosques. They started designing mosques after me uh, in Turkey. Uh, I mean, before uh, it was all classical copies by certain architects who were reflecting uh, the classical understanding of mosques. And all this changed with us, so I'm very grateful. And 
uh, of course, I remember that very differently than all the other jobs. Uh, okay, uh, I think this is such a good image for Turkey. Thank you. Thank you for everybody. Have I answered all the questions or?